So after discussing the normal random variable, we will today talk about the exponential random variable, a continuous random variable x whose p d f for some lambda greater than 0, please note that the parameter has to be positive. Then f x equal to lambda e raise to minus lambda x for x non negative and 0 otherwise is said to be exponentially distributed or has an exponential distribution, whichever way you want to say it. Okay. So, again we validate uh, that this is a p d f indeed a p d f. So, it is non negative right, since lambda is non negative. Uh, so, therefore, by definition this is non negative and the integral from 0 to infinity uh, lambda e raise to minus lambda x d x would be uh, minus lambda upon lambda e raise to minus lambda x 0 to infinity. So, at infinity it is 0, at 0 it is 1. So, and with the minus sign. So, minus minus plus. So, this is equal to 1. So, this is this is indeed a, a p d f. Then uh, you want to compute its distribution function and uh, here this would be 0 to a right. So, this is probability x less than or equal to a therefore, this is integral 0 to a and this again comes out to be 1 minus e raise to minus lambda a a greater than or equal to 0 right. Because uh, our variable itself is non negative. Now, um, I, we verify the uh, uh, we verify the conditions that uh, um, C d f must satisfy and uh, so limit f a as a goes to plus infinity is uh, 1. From here you see as a goes to infinity this will go to 0. So, this reduces to 1 and I should have also written down the uh, limit uh, f a as a goes to minus infinity. As uh, a goes to minus infinity, see we have anyway said that uh, x is less than, uh, I mean for x less than 0, this there is no mass and uh, then can I uh, say it from here, if a is less than 0, then of course, this integral uh, is not defined. I mean if a is less than 0, then this integral is 0 or you can argue that this is uh, there is no mass uh, for x less than 0. So, limit f a a goes to this is 0. Okay. Yeah, fine. Then f x is monotonically increasing. Uh, so, therefore, you take the derivative of f prime uh, of f x which is f prime x that will come out to be uh, lambda. Uh, okay, you are differentiating. Yeah. So, um, your f x would be well you treat a as x does not matter. So, if you are uh, differentiating this yeah. So, the uh, lambda would come here minus lambda. So, minus lambda in minus plus e raise to minus lambda x and since lambda is non negative right because uh, lambda is greater than 0. So, therefore, this is again uh, non negative and so uh, the function is monotonically increasing. So, so all the properties of a uh, uh, cumulative density function have been uh, are satisfied. Okay. Then we find out the expectation of the random variable and uh, that will be integral lambda 0 to infinity integral 0 to infinity x e raise to minus lambda x d x and by integration by parts I treat this as a first function. So, this will be this and now uh, you see that at 0 this is 0. So, therefore, and this is 1. So, the product is 0 at infinity e raise to minus lambda x goes to uh, or if you can write it as x upon e raise to lambda x, then e raise to lambda x goes to infinity much faster than x does. So, the ratio uh, tends to uh, uh, 0. So, therefore, no contribution from this term and you are left with, with just this. So, therefore, uh, again when you integrate minus 1 upon lambda e raise to minus lambda x. 0 to infinity that gives you 1 by lambda. So, the way to remember uh, is that if lambda is the parameter for the exponential distribution and it is defined in this way, then the inverse of the parameter is your mean or the expectation. Okay. Uh, some, some, some places people define it as 1 by lambda minus 1 by lambda x. So, in that case your expectation will become lambda. So, it is the inverse of the parameter. So, whatever you use for defining this, uh, the inverse of that will come out to be the 
uh, your ok. So, um, uh, then to find out the variance you find out expectation x square and I have not done the calculations here, but again in the same way you will have to do two iterations of the integration by parts here x square is the um, uh, second function, this is the first function and you continue doing it. So, then that comes out to be 2 by lambda square and therefore, variance is uh, 2 by lambda square minus 1 by lambda square, which is equal to 1 by lambda square. Okay. Uh, Yes, so uh, a quick example. Uh, normally, this would be uh, associated. This distribution was, would because you know when you go to any uh, public place where there's a uh, service counter, uh, for example, post office or uh, railway booking and so on. Now, of course, it is more mostly online, but still people have to go to counters for all these services. Then um, you know uh, the uh, the time that uh, the clerk will take to uh, uh, to service the uh, customer uh, is uh, most of the time uh, a random variable. And so, uh, exponential variables do model that situation in quite a few uh, this thing. So, uh, uh, suppose the length of service at a post office counter in minutes is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equal to 1 by 15. So, immediately you can say that the expected number of um, time that uh, the expected duration of uh, 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 per, uh, of a service to a customer would be 15 minutes, right? Because the expected mean, uh, expect uh, the expected value of the ran this random variable would be 1 by lambda, which is 15 minutes. Okay. If someone arrives immediately ahead of you at the counter, find the probability that you will have to wait 15 minutes between 50, 15 and 13, 30 minutes. To find the probability that you have to wait for 15 minutes, that means at least 15 minutes. right? So, therefore, the event would be x greater than or equal to 15, where x is your time for having to wait. So, probability x greater than or equal to 15, which will be equal to 1 minus probability x less than 15. right? Okay, and therefore, as we have computed this already while computing this for the um, uh, for x less than x exponential distribution. So, this will be 1 minus of 1 minus e raise to minus 15 by 15, right, because your lambda is 15. So, therefore, um, um, this probability comes out to be e raise to minus 1, which is 0 0.368, right since as I have said that, because we have already made this computation that this will be equal to 1 minus e raise to minus 15 by lambda and your lambda is 15. So, therefore, this will be equal to e raise to minus 1 and so this is 0 0.368. So, similarly for the second one um, probability 15 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 30. That means, your waiting time is now between 15 and 30 minutes, 15 minutes and 30 minutes. So, that will be again by the same computations will be f 30 minus f 15 and which again would be 1 minus e raise to minus 2, because it will be 30 by 15, which is minus 2 and then this is 1 minus of 1 minus of e minus 1 and so, um, because this is less than or equal to 15 and so, um, less than or equal to 15, less than 15 for a continuous distribution. So, it will be this will be the probability and so, it is e raise to minus 1 minus e raise to minus 2, which is 0 0.233. Now, I want to show you another important property of the exponential distribution. So, first of all, we will talk about the memoryless property and we say that a random variable x is said to have the memoryless property, if probability x greater than s plus t, given that x is already greater than t, is equal to probability x greater than s, for all s and t non-negative, which means that it does not matter how long you have already waited. If you are asking for this probability x greater than s plus t, then it is the same as probability x greater than s. So, therefore, the system does not have uh, the, the system we are modeling does not have a memoryless property. And so, the, so we are talking of a, a, a random variable which whose distribution satisfies this condition. So, now um, I will show you uh, uh, that uh, the exponential distribution among all continuously distributed random variables or among all continuous PDFs, uh, exponential distribution has the property of being memoryless. Uh, 
distributions which are discrete and which also have the memoryless property, but among continuous um, continuously distributed random variables, a random variable which is exponentially distributed has the memoryless property. So, in case uh, this, uh, this random variable is uh, exponential, exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, then you see uh, if you write down this expression probability x greater than s plus t, given that it is uh, x is greater than t, then this will be this, uh, because when the product of these two would be intersection of these two events would be x greater than s plus t, right? You would because it's uh, t is smaller than s plus t. So this reduces to uh, this expression, okay? X greater than s plus t uh, divided by x greater than t. Now uh, by our definition, uh, this is uh, because uh, f a is one minus e minus lambda a. So one minus f a would be simply e raise to minus lambda a. So, here it is e raise to minus lambda s plus t divided by e raise to minus lambda t and which is this, which is equal to probability x greater than or equal to s. So, exponential random variables are memoryless and in fact, uh, a little more arithmetic would be required uh, or calculus to show that uh, if you impose this property, then you can actually show that uh, only, only uh, exponential random variables have the memoryless property. So, since this being a first course, I am omitting the uh, mathematics here, but those interested can sit down and work it out and see that uh, when you start with this condition for a continuous random variable, then you will see that uh, uh, only exponential random variables, the, the uh, p d f which will satisfy uh, this condition would actually will actually be uh, the uh, exponential uh, p d f. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, again look at an example. Suppose that the number of hours before a transistor fails is exponentially distributed with mean 500 hours. Okay. So, here the lambda is 500. If a person desires to go on a long trekking trip of 300 hours and uses the transistor in his radio, then we want to uh, find out what is the probability that the transistor will not fail what is the probability that the person will be able to complete his trip without having to replace the transistor. So, he wants that the, uh, the probability that uh, the transistor will not fail for the 300 hour uh, long uh, trip, uh, uh, trekking trip that he is undertaking. So, let us find out the, uh, so the solution is that f x is a 1 upon 500 e raise to minus 1 upon 500 x, because in the problem it says that uh, the, uh, the hours, the, the lifetime of the transistor is exponentially distributed with mean 500. So, as I was telling you, if the mean is 500, then the parameter will be 1 upon 500. So, therefore, the p d f of the, uh, the random variable representing the uh, lifetime of, uh, of the transistor would be given by this, fine x non negative. So, therefore, probability x greater than 300 is simply e raise to minus 3 by 5, because it is e raise to minus 300 upon 500, which is e raise to minus 3 by 5. And you can compute this value from the tables or. Okay. So, what can be said when the random variable is not exponentially distributed? In that case, the memoryless property is not there. And so, this will be simply a conditional uh, uh, probability in terms of capital F and so that is it. right? So, the, you see the advantage of having uh, a, a, a random variable, which, which is memory less. Okay. Now, another thing that is useful and uh, can be uh, again uh, for exponential random variable, it uh, gets quite simplified and that is the hazard rate function or and sometimes you also call it the failure rate function. Okay. So, if x is the random variable, which is the which is representing lifetime of uh, some item and of course, it is a non negative variable and the um, um, uh, p d f and the uh, c d f. So, p d f is given by uh, small f and c d f by capital F. Then uh, hazard rate function called the failure rate function is denoted by lambda t and is defined as follows. So, lambda t is small f t that means, the p d f divided by 1 minus c d f. right? So, uh, and uh, a simple explanation is possible. So, here again what we are saying is that x belongs to, this is the bracket here, uh, 
t plus delta t, delta t is very small and then uh, given that x has already worked for t, now what we are saying is that it will fail just after uh, t, because t plus delta t. So, uh, x lies in the interval t comma t plus delta t, given that it has been functional till time t. Okay. And so, this is um, a probability x belongs to t comma t plus delta t, delta t is a positive quantity very small. So, therefore, when you take the intersection of these two, you get this event divided by probability x greater than t. And so, this will be by our definition f t plus delta t minus f t divided by 1 minus f t. Okay. So, now you see uh, the limit of this as delta t um, uh, becomes smaller, then you know you divide by delta t and multiply by delta t. So, this divided by delta t remember limiting value of this is the derivative of f at t. So, which becomes f prime t into d t upon 1 minus f t and f prime t is your p d f f small f t divided by 1 minus f t d t. So, therefore, uh, the definition of the failure rate, because as we see that it should fail uh, just at t time, time t. So, it has been functional up to time t and then it fails. So, um, now if f t is exponential, uh, you see when you write out uh, this will be um, f t small f t. So, the uh, p d f is mu e raise to minus mu t. I have used symbol mu, because lambda is already being used here fine and this is 1 minus f t will be e raise to minus mu t. So, you see this is mu a constant. So, for, um, for an exponential random variable, the hazard rate is a constant, it is not a function of t. Otherwise, as you see that um, this will be a function of t. So, the hazard rate function is uh, dynamically changing depending on the time that means, if you are talking of lifetime. So, um, as it should be, but for uh, uh, exponential distribution the explanation is simple since it is memory less therefore, the hazard rate function does not change it is a constant. So, this is the rate of change of uh, this is the rate of failure and so, um, because it is memory less it does not matter how old the instrument is uh, the probability of its failing any time is uh, same and so, here the rate is also constant mu is therefore, also referred to as the rate of the exponential distribution. So, now mu is the parameter, this is also the rate of failure uh, for an exponential distribution and we saw that 1 upon mu will be the mean of the exponential distribution. So, given hazard rate of uh, function lambda t for a continuous random variable, it is possible to determine its p d f. Okay. Uh, so, we will just show, because you see lambda t I can write as d d t of f t 1 upon 1 minus f t. Right. And uh, then, um, if I take the integral of both the sides uh, and attach a minus sign. So, there is a minus sign here. This is 0 to x lambda t d t and this is integral 0 to x minus f prime t. I have written this as f prime t d t upon 1 minus f t. Okay. Now, uh, by uh, you know formula for uh, uh, integration, uh, because derivative of this is this. Therefore, this will be ln of 1 minus f t. Right. So, therefore, ln of 1 minus f x, because you are computing from 0 to x. So, it will be 1 minus f x will be and this is integral minus 0 to x lambda t d t. I hope this is clear, because see this will come out to be ln of 1 minus f t and this is from 0 to x. So, 0 to x when you put x here, this will be ln of 1 minus f x and at 0, uh, f 0 is um, f 0 is what? Um, f 0 is uh, uh, 0, right. So, l n of 1 is 0. So, therefore, uh, the contribution from here you get is l n of 1 minus f x. Yes, remember limit f x s x goes to minus infinity is 0. Okay. So, therefore, I am just using that. So, that, that uh, reduces to l n of 1 minus f x and this on the uh, right hand side this is minus 0 to x lambda t d t. So, therefore, uh, you can say 1 minus f x is equal to e raise to minus 0 to x lambda t d t. Right. Okay. And so, uh, f x you can write down from here as 1 minus of e raise to minus integral 0 to x of lambda t d t. So, if I know lambda t, then I can integrate here and then my f x will be of this form. 
Okay. So, that means, it is enough if you know the uh, uh, hazard trait function of a random variable, you can determine its distribution. So, once you know the cumulative density function, you can determine the uh, p d f also. Right. Now, um, I will just illustrate uh, the concept some more uh, through an example. And this says that, uh, see it is said that the death rate of a smoker is at each stage twice that of a non smoker. That means, they say that your age gets reduced by half, if you, uh, if you are a, a smoker uh, compared to uh, what uh, a non smoker. So, what is the ratio of the probability of a non smoker to that of a smoker, uh, to, to that of a smoker of um, uh, surviving up to the age of. So, suppose I am just saying that, uh, what uh, the uh, both of them surviving up to uh, the age of 60, given that both have survived up to 50 years, we want to find out the probabilities. So, maybe uh, the ratio part is not important, all I am saying is, let us find out the probabilities uh, that uh, a non smoker will survive up to the age of 60, given that uh, he or she has survived up to 50 years. Similarly, a smoker the probability, what is the probability of a smoker surviving up to uh, 60 years, given that he has survived up to 50 years. So, I um, will define lambda s t as the hazard rate of the smoker and lambda n t as the hazard rate of non smoker. So, now, um, um, let me just right now take instead of 50, just let me take uh, some uh, years a, age a. So, what we are saying is that the probability that a non smoker's lifetime is more than 60 years, given that the lifetime of the non smoker has been more than a, is um, the conditional probability, right. Uh, because uh, again the intersection of these two, because 60 is more than a. So, this is a probability that the non smoker has been uh, the lifetime would be more than 60. So, that becomes 1 minus f n 60 divided by 1 minus f n a. Right. And uh, from here, uh, you see this is 1 minus f x is e raise to uh, minus integral 0 to x lambda t d t. So, that will be 0 to 60 lambda n t d t. Right. And 1 minus f n a will be 0 to a lambda n t d t e raise to. Right. So, this is what we just computed here. And therefore, um, if you take this upstairs, then you see the integral this will become e raise to uh, yeah, uh, a to 60. So, this will be e raise to uh, minus integral of a to 60 lambda n t d t and this let me call as p n. So, the probability of um, smoker surviving up to the age of 60, given that he has already survived up to the age of uh, a. Right. And correspondingly, for a, a non smoker, for a smoker, this probability of having survived, uh, of surviving up to 60 years, given that he survived up to a years, is lambda s t d t, and I am calling it as p s. Okay. So, if uh, the belief is that lambda s t is twice lambda n t, that means the rate of uh, the death rate is uh, twice as high for a sm uh, smoker compared to a non smoker, then uh, I substitute lambda s t for, for lambda s t twice lambda n t here. So, that will be twice lambda n t and so, uh, this will become square of, I have not written the step, I mean actually this is equal to e raise to minus a to 60 lambda n t d t square which is uh, the probability p n square. So, the uh, effect is that the uh, probability uh, gets squared up uh, for a non smoker. So, the probability of surviving up to the age of 60 uh, is a square of the for a smoker is square of the probability of a non smoker surviving up to the age of 60. So, this 50 was uh, not really important, because uh, a could be anything here. So, given uh, at, at that that is why we said that at any stage, at each stage. Uh, so, therefore, it does not matter when you are uh, making this comparison. So, however old the, the both the people are, after that you, if you want to say what, uh, what is their age of surviving up to 60, then the probability for the uh, smoker is square of the probability for the. Uh, so, now here as I said that if you, uh, if you um, take lambda n t to be 1 by 30, that means remember I am taking the situation when um, uh, yeah. 
So, that, that means, this is now, uh, because this is constant. So, therefore, I am taking the exponential situation. That means, a random variable, uh, the lifetime is a, a random variable, uh, is exponentially distributed. Then, uh, uh, probability that a non-smoker reaches the age 60 would be, yeah, because this is lambda and t is uh, 1 by 30. So, uh, you want to compute, will it come out to be e raise to minus 1 by 3? Yes, e raise to minus uh, you are saying this is uh, 50, 60 and 1 by 30 uh, d t. So, what will that be? Uh, 1 by 30 into 10, right. So, this is, uh, uh, I mean e raise to minus. So, this is e raise to minus 1 by 3, ok. So, if it is a constant, that means it corresponds to uh, uh, exponential random variable. And so, uh, this is e raise to minus 1 by 3, which turns out to be 0 0.7165. So, for, for a non-smoker. And for a smoker, it will be the square of this, which will be 0 0.5134. So, see how uh, fast the probability has reduced, because the, um, because the person is smoking. Okay. So, the probability of, of a smoker surviving up to the age of 60 is 0 0.5134 and uh, for a non smoker it is 0 0.7165. So, that way one can have uh, many more applications and as we go along, maybe I have put some problem related to hazard rate function in your um, exercise 4 also. Okay. Now, uh, we continue with some more special uh, continuous random variables and uh, the next one is the gamma distribution and x is said to have gamma distribution with parameters alpha and lambda. Both the parameters have to be positive. P d f is given by uh, this equation. So, f x is lambda e raise to minus lambda x, lambda x in raise to alpha minus 1 upon gamma alpha and that is why the name. So, this is, uh, let me uh, show you the calculation for uh, the uh, ga for gamma alpha. So, let us compute the value of uh, gamma alpha for alpha greater than 1. So, therefore, the definition is, this is equal to 0 to infinity e raise to minus y, y raise to alpha minus 1 d y. Right? So, integration by parts and therefore, this will be the derivative here is um, e raise to minus y should be minus. Yes. So, here this is minus e raise to minus y, y raise to alpha minus 1, 0 to infinity and then this becomes plus, because minus minus is plus. So, therefore, this will be plus 0 to infinity, then derivative of this is alpha minus 1, y raise to alpha minus 2, e raise to minus y d y. Now, let us compute the values at the two limit points, uh, at the end points. So, for y equal to 0, see this will be 0, because alpha is greater than 1 and therefore, it is important. So, alpha is greater than 1, therefore, this is a positive power. So, therefore, this is 0 and of course, uh, at 0 e raise to minus e raise to 0 is 1. So, this is equal to 0, right. And again, when uh, y goes to infinity, then um, this goes to infinity faster than this. Here again, because alpha is greater than 1, so this uh, exponent is positive and therefore, this will go to 0. So, therefore, no contribution by this term and so your integral, so gamma alpha reduces to just this, which by our notation will be gamma alpha uh, minus 1, should have written, yeah. So, therefore, uh, I did not write, yeah. So, here iteratively that means this integral will be now alpha minus 1, ok. And so, for positive integer values of alpha, if I, you know, go on doing it iteratively. So, for integer values of alpha, positive integer values of alpha, this we can see is um, gamma alpha would reduce to alpha mi factorial alpha minus 1. You can see that, because as go on. So, the finally, what you have will be, uh, th this will be then, uh, I should have, uh, yes, this is alpha minus 1. So, this should be equal to alpha minus 1, gamma alpha minus 1, right, from here, alpha minus 1, ok, fine. So, therefore, as uh, you go on, the next iteration, it will be gamma alpha minus 2. And so, as uh, we go on, alpha is a positive integer. Therefore, you will end up finally, with just integral 0 to infinity e raise to minus y d y. And so, uh, this will reduce to um, 
uh, this will reduce to alpha uh, factorial of alpha minus 1 for alpha being positive integer. Right. Now, it can also be shown that the gamma function is defined for alpha between 0 and 1. This is also possible. We can also show that the uh, integral will is defined that is uh, it will be a finite value. So, for all values of alpha between 0 and 1, uh, the integral is also defined. That means, gamma alpha is defined for alpha between 0 and 1. And uh, one uh, important value is uh, gamma 1 by 2, which is uh, root pi. And this integral, we will we will obtain these values later on in the uh, forthcoming chapters. So, I will talk about fractional values of gamma alpha, uh, alpha between 0 and 1. And uh, there are tables available for uh, uh, values of fractional values of alpha. Uh, there are tables available, non negative fractional values of alpha uh, tables are available, right. And uh, for alpha equal to 1, the gamma distribution reduces to the exponential distribution. I uh, will have to check the, uh, yeah, see our, um, our gamma uh, p d f is given by this. So, when you put um, alpha equal to 1, this term is gone, and so your p d f reduces to lambda e raise to minus lambda x, and gamma alpha is also. Uh, 0, uh, so I mean sorry 1. So, therefore, uh, you will be the gamma p d f reduces to lambda e raise to minus lambda x for x non negative. So, therefore, uh, for alpha equal to 1, the gamma distribution reduces to the exponential distribution. So, this is one relationship and then I will show you uh, some other relationships between many other uh, this thing. Now, you want to again check that this p d f is a valid p d f and therefore, um, I have to show that this integral uh, will eval be evaluated to 1. So, here of course, you put lambda x equal to y, uh, then uh, lambda d x is equal to d y and immediately uh, this integrand reduces to e raise to minus y, lambda d x gets replaced by d y and this is y raise to alpha minus 1 upon gamma alpha. And so, from here you see that uh, divide by gamma alpha here and this is equal to 1. So, the validation is complete. Okay. So, therefore, this is a valid p d f and uh, now you want to compute uh, the expectation of this uh, gamma random variable, then um, you have to uh, multiply this by x and uh, integrate, but uh, then when it is easy to manipulate, because I will add x, uh, x to this and lambda also. So, I divide by lambda, then I multiply by alpha and multiply here by alpha. So, this becomes gamma alpha 1 by our definition. right? So, this will be gamma alpha 1 and this will be lambda x raise to alpha. So, then uh, this will be uh, that means, the p d f of uh, gamma, uh, the here now your parameters are uh, alpha plus 1 and lambda. right? So, therefore, since the uh, this is again a p d f for gamma alpha 1 comma lambda. So, again it will integrate to 1 and so you will be left with alpha by lambda. So, the, p, uh, the expected value of uh, alpha lambda gamma variable is alpha upon lambda. Okay. So, that means, if uh, the convention is to write this first and then this. So, then uh, this divided by this that is if you are taking uh, the gamma distribution alpha comma lambda. Okay. Then uh, similarly, expectation x square can also be just by a simple manipulation com computed immediately. What I will do, I need lambda square here to bring this together with this. So, then I divide by lambda square and I multiply by alpha alpha 1 to make it gamma alpha plus 2 and this will be lambda x raise to alpha plus 1. So, again this is a p d f of gamma alpha plus 2 lambda. So, this will integrate to 1 and I will be left with alpha into alpha plus 1 upon lambda square. And so, variance will be uh, this quantity minus alpha lambda whole square and that gives me alpha upon lambda square. So, simple calculations uh, to tell you the uh, required quantities. Okay, now, let me just show you an application and um, this application may be I uh, will be using a concept which we have yet to do, but does not matter I still thought that this will be a good time to mention this application. So, here uh, see the case this is uh, we are considering the case when alpha is a positive integer, uh, when alpha is equal to n is a positive integer. Okay. Now, 
gamma distributions arise as the distribution of the time one has to wait until a total of n events have occurred. So, it is like you go to a uh, railway booking uh, counter and uh, railway ticket booking counter, then uh, you have people ahead of you in the queue and uh, each person as, as I told you that the uh, we will treat the service time as a random variable. So, um, and uh, remember that the uh, uh, I had shown you that the exponent, the, the service time being a random variable can be an exponential random variable. So, for each person the uh, uh, service time is a random variable and then since they are uh, different people, independent people. So, um, each one uh, gets serviced. So, then the total time would be sum of that many independent random variables. and. Uh, exponentially distributed random variables, this is the idea. So, now, uh, the uh, what I am trying to show you is that the gamma variable is actually the time uh, one has to wait till all people ahead of you have been serviced and you have also been serviced. So, the way we will measure it is that, so when I am saying alpha equal to n. So, here I um, will be counting that you also have been serviced. So, then until a total of n events have occurred. Okay. And uh, of course, later on when we do the Poisson process and so on, then the whole thing will uh, become much more clear, but you can just get a feeling for the uh, application that I am trying to uh, discuss here. So, now um, let T n be the time at which the nth event has occurred. Okay. So, time at which nth event occurred. So, then T n less than or equal to T, this event would that mean, if and only if all the n events have occurred by time T. Right. T n is the time at which the nth event occurred. So, now T n less than or equal to T will mean that by time T all the n events have should have occurred, which means in our particular case all n people have been uh, serviced by the uh, railway uh, book, ticket booking counter. Now, let uh, capital N T be the number of events in 0 T. So, see in this particular case uh, if there are people ahead of you let us say n minus 1 people ahead of you, you are the nth person, then that means in the, and the time span that you are taking is 0 to t, then that many people should have arrived in the, in the time 0 to t. When there are n, n people in the system, then only they get serviced. This is how we. So, in this case, uh, there are n arrivals in this time. right? Okay. And so, when we look at probability t n less than or equal to t, if you want to compute this probability, then this is the same as probability n t greater than or equal to n, because at least n events in 0 t. That means, n, at least n arrivals must be there. There can be more, but when you are talking of n people to be serviced in this particular time, span of time, then that at least that many people should have arrived or that many uh, events must be there in the system. So, this is what it is. right? And this we will uh, therefore, uh, because this is a discrete uh, thing, people arriving uh, is a discrete, uh, are discrete events. So, j, uh, this, this will be j from n to infinity, probability n t equal to j. right? Probability that there are j people in the uh, system at time 0 t, and then you sum it up from j equal to n to infinity. Now, this is the part. See, um, very often when you talk of events, discrete events occurring in a span of time, uh, under certain conditions it can be shown that the, uh, the, these will be Poisson arrivals. That means, the uh, number of arrivals in a span of time would follow a Poisson distribution and therefore, probability n t equal and this I will prove hopefully, when we are talking about uh, 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 stochastic processes and uh, uh, so on. So, then in detail I will discuss how you arrive at this probability. Right. When you are under certain assumptions, you can show that the uh, uh, probability uh, n arrivals in the time 0 t would be given by this. So, you sum it up j to n. So, that means, for n t equal to j, essentially n t is a uh, Poisson random variable. And so, the, uh, the uh, mean value becomes lambda t, because you are taking the span 0 t. So, this will later on be explained. So, therefore, uh, this is your Poisson probability, you sum it up from n to infinity. Right. Now, um, this is your uh, cumulative distribution function for T n. Now, to, find, to find out the p d f, I will take the derivative, which is f T n of T. And so, we differentiate this expression with respect to T, 
and uh, you see if you uh, first differentiate this, then lambda comes out and j. So, j lambda e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to j minus 1 divided by j factorial minus derivative of this, which will be lambda minus lambda e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to j divided by j factorial. And here um, j varies from n to infinity. Okay. And so, to just rearrange the things a little bit, uh, j uh, when cancels out here. So, it will be j minus 1 factorial lambda t raise to j minus 1. So, what you see is that here the terms are from starting from j minus 1 and here it is j. So, you see things will cancel out in pairs and except the first term here will be left out, which will be uh, lambda e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial. That is the only one, because when you put j equal to n plus 1 here, that will be uh, uh, lambda t raise to n upon n factorial and here also j equal to n, it will be n factorial and lambda t raise to, uh, uh, why is it uh, j minus 1 here? I will subtract, so this will be j, sorry, because uh, when I am differentiating with respect to uh, uh, this one here, then lambda t raise to j remains intact. So, this is it. So, when j, so therefore, this term will cancel out with the second term here and then the third term here will cancel out with the second one here and so this will process will go on, only the first term will be left out here, which is lambda e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to n minus 1 upon n minus 1 factorial. So, this is now a gamma distribution with parameters n comma lambda. So, therefore, the amount of time a person has to wait uh, till he uh, he is serviced and if there are n minus 1 people ahead of him in the queue and so, um, uh, that uh, the uh, that is a random uh, variable and uh, the, uh, we, we have now just now shown that when the arrivals are Poisson, then uh, this will be a gamma distribution with parameters n comma lambda. So, in this case, this is also referred to as an n Erlang distribution. That is another name in literature. You might some, some books may refer to this distribution as n Erlang. Okay. So, we have got some feeling about the gamma distribution and as we go on, I will give you some more uh, you know insight into the thing. Now, uh, the other dis, uh, continuous variable distribution, which is of importance is the beta distribution. So, a random variable x with p d f given by the equation uh, f x x is 1 upon uh, this is a beta function a, a comma b x raise to a minus 1, 1 minus x raise to b minus 1, x between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise. The, the integral we denote by b a comma b. So, this is 0 to 1 x raise to a minus 1, 1 minus x raise to b minus 1 d x, where a and b both are positive. Now, again just as for the gamma distribution, we can show that for a greater than or equal to 1 and b greater than or equal to 1, the integral will converge and in fact, um, for uh, integer values um, just like we did for the computation for uh, gamma distribution, it can be shown that this integral will be equal to gamma a gamma b by gamma a plus b. So, therefore, um, um, I should again uh, uh, correct my uh, statement here and that is that the beta uh, p d f is this function divided by this. So, it becomes gamma a plus b divided by gamma a gamma b and therefore, the integral will it turn out to be 1. So, the gamma p d, the beta p d f is actually this divided by this number and so we denote this integral by b a comma b, which is. So, therefore, um, it is uh, since uh, it is defined for all a b positive. Now, for a greater than or equal to 1 and b greater than or equal to 1, you can show by integration by parts that the integral will converge and for um, <coughs> and will be equal to this. Okay. And for uh, fractional values of a and b, also it can be shown that uh, <coughs> this is defined, the integral is defined and it is equal to gamma a gamma b upon gamma a plus b. Right. Now, um, uh, many uh, useful applications of the beta distribution and uh, in one case is that it models random phenomena whose set of possible values is some finite interval c comma d. So, that means, all possible values of this random phenomena occur between uh, within a certain interval c comma d. And, but then since we have here defined the variable to be from 0 to 1. So, then by scaling and uh, shifting, 
we can transform uh, this interval to 0 1. And of course, one obvious transformation is that y is equal to x minus c upon d minus c. So, then all possible values of x which are within uh, c d will now be. So, the corresponding y variable will have all values between 0 and 1. So, um, and then we will see further the applications of the beta distributions and, and we will compute the other quantities related with the beta distribution. Now, I am just trying to give you um, uh, pictures of or graphs of uh, this um, uh, beta distribution for different. So, now when a is equal to b, this graph is symmetric the graph of the beta function is a pdf is symmetric and for example a equal to 3 it will be something like this and as a becomes bigger the mass gets concentrated this uh, the graph becomes narrower and this is symmetric right so if you draw for a equal to 10 probably it will be something like this peak the peak will be higher and so on now for um, a not equal to b uh, the graph is asymmetric and skewed towards the left so, for example, a equal to half, it is almost skewed towards the y axis and uh, as a increases, again uh, the skewness shifts to the center and uh, these, of course, they are not, uh, uh, the graphs are not drawn to scale, but in any case a upon a plus b is equal to 1 by 20. So, in this situation, when you suppose a is 6, you can find out what the value of b is and so on. Now, um, there are um, situations, see for example, um, uh, if you have a big project in which you have lot of jobs and so of course, a big project will be made up of a number of jobs and um, uh, this project may not have been handled completely before. So, there is lot of uncertainty about the job completion times and as a project manager, uh, he has to, he or she has to, uh, you know, sometimes uh, be, uh, have some estimate as to how long it will take for the uh, whole project to be completed, which means that must have a good idea as to how long it will take for each job to be uh, completed. Now, in the absence of any uh, previous experience, because the jobs have not been performed. For example, of course, this is now a very old example that when uh, they were trying to put a man on the moon, uh, then it was a completely new project. All the jobs that made up the project were all new. So, uh, people had no idea about the um, how long it will take for the jobs to be completed, but certainly there is a certain finite span. And then of course, you do not expect just like as for the normal distribution for example, it is a symmetric distribution, but then here there was no reason to believe that the uh, completion time distributions will be uh, uh, symmetric. So, therefore, beta distributions fitted the bill very well because uh, uh, here, here was a distribution which uh, has a finite span and um, even though it is a continuous distribution and then um, it was not symmetric so and so on. So, um, uh, then uh, huge uh, you know, projects were uh, then uh, the time estimations were made using beta distributions. So, interesting applications uh, right. So, uh, where job completion times are not predictable. Uh, you have no idea. Then um, again by integration by parts, you can show that um, expected value of x is a upon a plus b and variance x will be a b upon a plus b into a plus b plus 1. Okay, so, um, uh, beta distributions again, um, if one gets time, one can talk about, I can give you an idea um, how uh, the time estimates are done using uh, uh, beta distributions. Okay. Um, now, uh, as we go along, we also uh, need to keep coming back to distributions of function of a random variable and I um, will just uh, do some sample uh, functions here and then uh, try to give you a, a general result. So, let us say suppose x is uniform 0 1 then that means, x is taking uh, non negative values. Then uh, if you define the function y equal to x raise to n, then obviously, x raise to n will also remain in the interval 0 to 1. That means, the range for y is between uh, 0 and 1. And so, if I want to find the um, p d f of y, then probability y less than or equal to small y uh, is the same event as probability x n less than or equal to y and this will be probability x less than or equal to y 1 by n. So, remember this is ok, because um, the values here are non-negative. So, this is the same as this inequality. 
uh, the nth root, right. And now, if you differentiate both sides, uh, this will give you the p d f of y. And here, when you differentiate this, this will give you uh, the p d f, because this is now f x, right. This, this side is uh, f x y 1 by n. So, you are differentiating with respect to y. And so, this is f x y raise to 1 by n into the derivative of y 1 by n, which is 1 by n y raise to 1 by n minus 1 and y between 0 and 1. So, but for a, for a uniform uh, random variable, this is equal to 1, right. And therefore, uh, the p d f of y reduces to 1 by n y raise to 1 by n minus 1, when y is between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay take another function. So, now, when you take the function y equal to x square, in this case you are not saying that x can only take uh, non-negative values, x can take negative values also. Then uh, you see, when you write down this event probability y less than or equal to small y, which is probability x square uh, less than or equal to y, then um, this will be then equal to this event, that capital X is between minus root y and plus root y because I did not, in case if, if I had in, uh, you know sort of put the restriction that x has to be non-negative, then obviously, this it would have been just this part, this part would not have been there. But since I am allowing uh, x to take all positive negative values, therefore, um, this will be, <coughs> this will be uh, equal to this event, right. And so, by again our uh, this thing writing down in terms of the uh, cumulative density function, this will be f x root y minus f x of minus root y. Okay. And then, so we differentiate again with respect to y and d d y f y y is uh, the, uh, so here this will be f x root y and then the derivative of root y, which will be 1 upon 2 under root y. Okay. This is x and uh, plus f x minus root y. So, the minus minus will become plus, because there is a minus coming from here, there is a minus here already. So, plus f x of minus root y into 1 upon 2 root y. Okay. So, this will be your uh, p d f for uh, y equal to x square. Now, um, the third kind of function that I am looking at here is y equal to mod x. So, x has a p d f f x then here and so in this case y will have non negative values even mm -hmm. though x has negative values right so uh, we write down the event uh, probability y less than or equal to small y this is probability mod x less than or equal to y which again can be written as x between minus y and y right because the absolute value has to be uh, uh, less than y, y is a positive number. So, therefore, um, in magnitude uh, the value x, even if it is negative, it has to be higher than minus y, right. Because uh, if, if you are saying that mod x should be less than or equal to 3, then your x cannot be minus 4, because the absolute value of x would be 4, which is not less than 3. So, therefore, the values of x have to be between minus mm -hmm. y and y right. And uh, therefore, this is f y minus f of minus y and when you differentiate with respect to y, you get p d f of uh, capital Y, which is f x y again uh, minus sign gets converted to plus, because there is a minus coming from the derivative of minus y. So, this y greater than or equal to this. So, one can go on, but then I will just uh, uh, summarize all this in this theorem. Um, and uh, Yes. So, this is x is a continuous random variable and f x it is p d f. Suppose, g x is a strictly monotone increasing or decreasing function. So, this is now very clear and it is differentiable. So, strictly monotone means that it is either going like this, a function like this or it is coming like this. So, monotonically decreasing or monotonically increasing. Then the random variable y equal to g x has a p d f given by this and it will take a few minutes to just prove this result. So, in this I just realized that in the statement of the theorem, uh, this absolute value sign is missing, but that is important and I will show you why. So, that means, uh, uh, when uh, y equal to, when you are looking at the uh, function g x of the random variable x and we are finding the p d f of y, then f y of uh, small y is f x 
uh, the PDF of x into uh, of at g inverse y uh, and absolute value of d d y of g inverse y, when y is equal to g x and 0 if y is not equal to g x. And of course, here what we are saying is that the spurious values are not being considered because when you take the inverse function, here see it is a monotone function. So, uh, the relationship between that means, uh, this would be uh, I do not have to worry about extra values here. So, this will be fine. Okay. So, now let us look at the proof of the uh, theorem. So, uh, we start with the event, we start with the event that y is less than or equal to small y, which is equal to this and this uh, I can write x less than or equal to g inverse y. Now, because the function is monotonically increasing, so this inequality uh, from here, this inequality is the valid outcome, right? Uh, because it is increasing. So, the inequality will not change. The function g, I, we have assumed is increasing function, right? And therefore, this is equal to f x of g inverse y. Is it okay? So, um, differentiate both sides with respect to small y, then this is f y y, which is d d y of this thing. And in the next step, you get this is the p d f of capital Y, which is uh, here when you differentiate capital F x, you get small f x. So, that is g inverse of y into the derivative of this, which is y. And now, here, um, because the function g is monotone, this again a result from calculus, you can show that positive derivative and f being the p d f f x being the p d f of x, this is non negative. So, the product is non negative and therefore, uh, this is non negative. So, this satisfies the condition and of course, you can verify that this is also a valid p d f. That means, the integral would be uh, 1 and uh, so, this is it. So, when, when you are taking the increasing function, then because the this part is non negative, I do not have to put the bar sign here, but when um, g is decreasing, then you see uh, the uh, probability uh, the event g x less than or equal to y will uh, g, uh, the transform to x greater than or equal to g inverse y. And that is what I am showing you that if this is the function g x, right, then <coughs> you are saying g x less than or equal to y. So, g x less than or equal to y. So, beyond g inverse y are the values for which your function is less than y, right, when the function is decreasing. And so, the inequality here will reverse and that will be x greater than or equal to g inverse y. Right. And um, therefore, f y is 1 minus this you will write as 1 minus f x of uh, g inverse y and then again differentiation both, both sides will give you f y y then minus f x g inverse y and derivative of this. Now, since uh, g is a decreasing function, this derivative would be negative. So, minus minus this will make it positive and that is why it is important that we uh, write the absolute sign here, because your um, p d f cannot be uh, negative. Okay. That is the first condition and which turns out to be, because when the function is decreasing, this will be negative. So, minus into this would become non-negative and so here again, this would be positive. Okay. So, this is uh, for the completion sake that I wrote down this theorem, but normally what we do is we ab initio uh, you know uh, in uh, do compute the uh, p d f, we write down the equivalent event when you take a function of a random variable and then of course, differentiating both the sides, you try to get the p d f for the uh, function of a random variable, but at times it also helps to be able to uh, use the theorem. So, this is uh, this thing. Now, um, let me just uh, show you uh, that as was as I was saying that um, one can either obtain results directly or using the theorem. So, if x is an exponentially distributed random variable with mean 1 by lambda, then we will show that expectation of x raised to k is k factorial upon lambda k, k weighing from 1. So, uh, for any finite value of k, this is what you have. right? Now, uh, a direct solution I am giving you. So, solution solution 1 I should have said actually, this is solution 1, which is a direct solution. So, here uh, because I know the uh, p d f of uh, x. So, expectation x raised to k will be 0 to infinity x raised to k lambda e raised to minus lambda x d x. Remember, we are told that the uh, mean is 1 by lambda. So, the parameter uh, the distribution would be lambda e raised to minus lambda x d x and uh, integration by parts, treating this as the first function. So, the lambda lambda cancels uh, minus e raise to minus uh, 
why am I writing t here? This should be lambda x into x raised to k 0 to infinity plus the minus sign and minus sign makes it plus 0 to infinity e raised to minus lambda x and then x raised to k minus 1 d x into k. right? So, you see this integral will come out to be this and then I again multiply uh, and divide by lambda. So, then this becomes my <coughs> regular gamma function. So, 1 upon lambda. So, this will be i k minus 1 into k by lambda this integral, because when I differentiate this, this will the k will come out. Um, oh, the k should have been there. So, so you have differentiated x k. So, k is already there. Huh, okay, okay. k is here. So, that k I am writing k by lambda and then this integral is your i k minus 1. Right. Our i k was lambda e raise to minus lambda x, x raise to k in d x integral from 0 to infinity. So, now this integral I denote by i k minus 1 right? and therefore, uh, your expected value of x k as you go on doing it by uh, iteratively uh, here of course, k is a positive integer. So, this is k factorial upon lambda k into i 0 final right. If I go on doing it repeatedly. So, this becomes then uh, for if I write down for i 0, this will be k factorial upon lambda k integral 0 to infinity lambda e raise to minus lambda x d x, which turns out with this, this integral is 1, because anyway you know that this is the p d f of uh, uh, an exponential distribution with the parameter lambda. So, therefore, this integral is 1 or you can directly show that this is 1 and therefore, this is the answer. Right? Now, we want to use the theorem. So, the using the theorem uh, that is uh, that you compute the p d f of the uh, random variable x s to k. That means, I compute the p d f of the function of the random variable and then through that route I try to compute the expected value. So, if I define my y as x raise to k, then I am trying to compute y less than or equal to small y, which is probability x raise to k less than or equal to y, which is then x, because everything is non-negative. So, therefore, the inequality will be converted to this, that is x less than or equal to y raise to 1 by k. And then f y y, that is the p d f of y now will be f x of y raise to 1 by k into 1 by k y raise to 1 by k minus 1, right. Because this I will be writing this is as f x of y 1 by k. Right. And so, E y will therefore, be 0 to infinity y into uh, f y y, which is f uh, f y y d y, which I uh, substitute for f y y in terms of f x. So, this will be 0 to infinity y lambda e raise to minus lambda y raise to 1 by k, 1 by k y raise to 1 by k minus 1 d y. Okay. And so, uh, E y so, now here I can put y raise to 1 by k as s. So, then 1 by k y raise to 1 by k minus 1 d y is d s. So, this whole thing goes to d s and so I have now here s raise to k right, because y will be s raise to k and lambda e raise to minus lambda s d s. And this is uh, uh, now we recognize that if I uh, take lambda divide by lambda raise to k and combine lambda here. So, lambda s raise to k and so this is your gamma p d f and therefore, uh, uh, not p d f in the sense that I must have here gamma k plus 1. So, therefore, uh, this integral will therefore, be equal to this integral will be equal to gamma of k plus 1 and then divided by lambda k. So, that is another way of and since this is an integer k is an integer positive integer. So, this will be k factorial upon lambda k, which we got here also. So, um, you know which where whichever is convenient one can try to get the result uh, either way.